Salamand Baggy. Salamand Baggy. Okay, this is actually a very sad day for me to be here because of this. And I also believe it's a sad day for the people of Indonesia. We have flown halfway around the world to be here because we believe this to be a very important case of uh, a, a travesty of justice. Freedom of speech is fundamental to the successful and fledgling democracy. An independent judiciary system is fundamental to the success of a fledgling democracy. Corruption in any justice system is simply not acceptable. Yes, corruption is what I said. When payments have to be made to most levels of civil servants, means it is so far away from being a just and fair judicial system. So apart from having to pay lawyers for your defence, you have to pay people who are also being paid by the state to progress your case. This has to stop. The people of Indonesia will demand that this stops. I have come to know Anand Krishna very well. He's a decent, law-abiding citizen of Indonesia. His vision of a peaceful and loving world should be in the heart of every person on this planet. Just what are the authorities afraid of? Are actually allowing people the freedom of speech? What have they got to hide? This is what this is about today, is freedom of speech. The overt aggressive action against Anand simply has to stop. The recent decision of overturning the acquittal verdict of the District Court by the Supreme Court is outrageous. And once the facts are published, you too will believe that it is outrageous. And I certainly hope you will. You all know that the case against him is based on a frivolous, unproven sexual harassment complaint. It has been shown that during the first trial, 10% of the questions were about the case and 90% about Anand, his thoughts, his books, his aspirations. Do you still believe this is a case about sexual harassment? No way. The only complainant, Tara, was shown to be a liar when medical evidence proved she was still a virgin and no indication of violence against her. You can draw your own conclusions as to her motivation. The first panel of judges was removed owing to the chief judge having illegal relations with a witness. And not as a prosecutor will have you believe that it was only because the Anand community insisted they change the judge. Who is this arrogant woman of a prosecutor who believes she can pervert the course of justice at will? She will be exposed for what she is within time. Luckily, the second panel of judges, acting with absolute professionalism, went through the witnesses and other evidence and decided that the case was proven, not proven, and further, the chief judge, and this is very relevant, stated that it was not proven by her own belief, and therefore, the panel of judges brought a verdict of acquittal on all charges. Now let's turn to the law of Indonesia, one in particular, concerning the law of criminal procedure, article number 244. Let me repeat, An Anand was acquitted of all charges. Article number 244 specifically, and you unequivocally, states that a public prosecutor may not submit an appeal to the Supreme Court where the outcome is one of acquittal. Let me repeat again, the public prosecutor cannot submit an appeal where the outcome is one of acquittal. This is the law of Indonesia. There are therefore two major issues here. Firstly, the Supreme Court seems to have completely ignored the contra appeal made by Anand's lawyers. They have simply, in the most part, copied and pasted from the appeal presented by the prosecutor into their written verdict. To ignore completely the repost by the defence is at best incompetent and at worst it is criminal. They may be the Supreme Court, but they mustn't get away with this. Secondly, the Supreme Court have illegally heard a case they should not have, as you will see. Let me quickly inform you 
that they may come back with a statement concerning pure and impure. When an appeal is sent to the Supreme Court, they judge it to be either pure or impure. If it's impure, they will hear it. If pure, they will not. The problem is there is no definition as to what pure and impure actually is, and it is jurisprudence as far as the judges are concerned. But it has no basis in law, and it certainly can't override existing legislation as per Article 244. And this is really of paramount importance. Listen, it's time to fight back. It's time to send a message to the authorities that this behaviour will no longer be tolerated by the people of Indonesia. It's time to send a message to the individuals who are playing with the system for their own benefit. It has to stop if this great and stunning country is ever to achieve true democracy and the wonderful people of this lovely country are able to live with a peace of mind when it comes to their judiciary system. How do we fight back? Well, and listen to this. We intend to issue a summons to the prosecutor. We intend to issue a summons to the clerk of the district court. We intend to issue a summons against the judges of the Supreme Court. Why, you may ask? Well, the prosecutor put forward illegally an application for an appeal to the clerk of the court. The clerk of the court illegally accepted the application for an appeal. The Supreme Court judges accepted the submission for the appeal illegally. We, at the National World Organization, will continue to back NN's lawyers with their fight for justice. Our Law Commission will be at the disposal of NN until this travesty of justice has been settled. This will be a victory for justice and also a victory for the people of Indonesia in fighting corruption. Thank you very much.